Welcome Strategy Battle Gamers to another Jubit Show YouTube video. You're here with your host Jubit Show Damien and this is another one of my um, hobby building, unboxing, assembly, painting, tactics, guides. Hooray! So um, <clears throat> yeah as you've um, probably seen over the last few years I've this is a sort of a regular series I do. Um, in the past you would have seen uh, Alfred, I think the Ogres, the Troll Brute, um, the Gundabad Troll, I think I've done them before. There's about there's about four or five. And the basic um, premise of this series is that I um, get a, a new model or a kit that I like and I take it from the box to um, to completely being completely painted and using it on the table and so on and so forth. Um, what's interesting is um, hopefully, I'm not, I'm not quite sure when you'll see this video, um, who knows, <laughs> it might be in 2021, but you might be noticing around um, December and January um, that there's been a bit of a renaissance on the GBHL, hopefully. Um, I'm, I'm doing the rough maths in my head and I think I've got seven videos that will be out within a sort of four week period. So I'm not sure quite when this will fall, but um, you, you should have seen a lot more videos. Now, as a result of that, I've actually, as I'm recording this now, and to give you some clue, oh, I've heard my phone on the floor, it is the 17th of December. As I'm recording this now, I've actually got two of these other two of these videos in progress, um, sort of work in progress ones that um, didn't get finished, um, and there's a chance that at least one of them might get finished before this one and go up. So I, I honestly don't know, but you might be getting two of these in um, in quick succession. But um, either way, hopefully that's um, kind of exciting, and hopefully you're enjoying what should be a bit of a rebirth for the for the channel over over this month. Um, quite how long it lasts, I, I don't know but hopefully you've got a lot of content to, um, to listen to while you're painting over the holiday break. So, um, as I said, this series is completely irregular. Um, I have no rhyme or reason for why I pick the kits I do, but they, they generally, the thing they want to have in common is they're kind of self-contained. I don't do anything sort of like, you know, um, 100 Moran and Orcs or something. It will always be, you know, a single model or a couple of single models. And I think I've got a really good um, contender for this this time. And this is uh, this bad boy. The King of the Dead and his two heralds. Now, as you'll see, uh, to pro prove the validity of the series, this is still in shrink wrap. Mmm, delicious, delicious shrink wrap. So this is um, absolutely brand new. Um, I picked it up. When did these come out? Um, I want to say they were shown at Articon. So did they come out in September, maybe October time, something like that. So they've been out for a while and I picked it up. Now, obviously, um, I was never not going to pick it up for one reason. Like everyone else in the world, I've got this. Um, the Battle of the Field Starter Set, which of course has put 20 Warriors of the Dead into the hands of every hobbyist. And so this is basically an essential upgrade, which I imagine is why I got the plastic treatment, because I think, broadly speaking, the King of the Dead and his Heralds um, are, I, I don't know, the least iconic, perhaps, of the plastic kits we've had so far. Consider like Gandalf, you know, Eowyn, Three Hunters, Saruman and Grima, those kind of things. Um, but this is surely because... Um, of the star set essentially it's a great little add-on to buy this and then you've got a um well what would it be 10 150 300 sort of 500 point 400 500 point army just um armor dead straight out of the box which is super super cool and we're certainly seeing that that um every pla i think it's fair to say every plastic kit released up until this point so up until Saruman and Grima, um would go with the star set so i think i think that's the kind of rationale that they um they enhance the star set so yeah Super cool set. Now, as anyone who's kind of followed any various forms of Facebook or the Warhammer community or anything like that in the time over the last sort of year and a half where I haven't really been YouTubing, you will hopefully have followed that I did paint a huge army of the dead for, uh, it was around this time last year, I did it for Throne of Skulls last year. Uh, I was the king of the dead, I still have the crown, We And um, Throne of Skulls went really well and I managed to win it, which was super cool. And um, as part of that, I painted up. It's about 1,200 points of Army of the Dead. I've got a bunch of riders, a bunch of the metals, um, two bo two sets of the plastics, and three hunters and all that. So super, super cool. And I painted up my um, metal uh, uh, King of the Dead. Here he is. Good old lad. But um, naturally, when this set came out with this awesome new model and the Heralds, um, I had to get it and had to um, add this to the collection. So... Um, I'm really excited to kind of to kind of get these going, and that will entirely complete my uh, Dead or Dan Harrow force, uh, which is quite exciting. Uh, the other reason I picked this one, these vlogs, is whilst there are three models for the first time instead of one, um, 
they're really easy to paint. So to take my Army of the Dead as I as I just showed you, um, it's literally I haven't done them in a year now, but I think it's spray them white and then cover them in nickelac oxide or whatever that's that's called, then wash them with BL tan green and then um, dry brush them with Ultra and Grey. That's all that happened to every previous model. And so if I did that, these would be finished literally in a day or two, um, including assembly time. But I do think because they're, a, they're super cool, particularly the King of the Dead, and they are gonna be the main hero models for this army, I wanna put a bit more time into them. But as of yet, I don't quite know what that is. I don't know how to do it because they obviously need to tie in with the rest of my Army of the Dead. So um, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. My, my current thinking is that I'm going to paint them exactly the same as all my other um, Army of the Dead guys, but then kind of start adding some washes to them. Some kind of red, he's got a kind of ready purpley cape, isn't he? So kind of adding that and adding a few washes over the banners and try and, um, try and keep that very distinctive colour that I've got for the rest of the Army of the Dead, whilst also um, making these guys stand out a bit more and, I'm thinking with the King of the Dead in particular, maybe like painting on some highlights rather than just dry brushing them. But um, the the problem with that, of course, is that you're going to um, you're going to loot, you're going to make him stand out too much from the rest of the army, which I don't want. He still needs to look like a ghost that fits in with the rest of them. So um, that's the plan. Now my hope, incredibly optimistically, is that despite all that, I've still I'm still feeling pretty pumped. We're you know we're a week out from Christmas. Uh, I've got a lot of stuff to do at home. There's an outside chance I get these finished by Christmas. Um, I think I'm acknowledging to myself that that is an outside chance though, and the odds of this video being up before Christmas are probably slim, but either way, these will be the next models that I kind of complete painting. Um, I'm quite sure of that. My hope is that you certainly see this um, video sort of by mid-January at the very latest, but we'll have to wait and see. So um, that's the plan. Um, King of the Dead, two heralds. Um, we're going to get them painted up um, and then go through um, some tactic stuff with them uh, at the end of the video. The first thing we're going to do is um, take them downstairs and rip this box open and show you the sprues. So I um, hope you enjoy this latest sort of uh, hobby journey vlog. Off we go. So here we go, we have our lovely still fresh and cellophane kit. I'm going to um, rip into this now and um, show you the sprues. As always, uh, always worth saying, but use the scissors here. If you are going to use a knife to uh, cut this open, make sure that you are of knife wielding age. Mm, good quality cellophane on this, really, really good. Nice to see. Uh, so here it is. This looks suspiciously like the box that you just saw in the cellophane, but now it's out of the cellophane, so that's quite exciting. In we go. Mm, delicious. I think I might do a cheeky zoom out. There we go. So, um, first things first, we have our instructions. Do, 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 King of the Dead and Herald, or Koneg der Toten and Heloda. Um, we have a lovely little um, assembly guide, uh, which we have here. It shows you where the glue is going to go, um, which bits to glue on and so forth. Really nice guides from um, GW these days. And on the back we have the uh, same guide for the Heralds. So pretty cool, so it should be pretty good fun. And here they are. Oh, this is so exciting. These plastic kits really are a um, really are a treat. I always get super excited when I open one, so it's it's nice to be doing this kind of on uh, on film really for for once. So we have two sprues in the kit. Um, let's go and have a look at them now. So we'll start with this one, which is the King of the Dead. There he is. This model is absolutely gorgeous. Look at the detail on that. He's absolutely incredible. So much. It's got a character in there. Is this the most improved miniature we've seen released from the metal one to this? This looks like it'd be the back of his cloak. You can see the kind of um, way it all kind of flows. Uh, a thing that a lot of people made the facts of, I'm trying to show this off, is that he's hollow. Can you see that you can see the white through him? So there's actually a lot of depth in there now. It could potentially be a bit of a problem for painting, um, but it's a good problem to have. That, look, that little circle there looks like it might be the top of his crown. And then up here, we've got his sword. 
and lots more bits of him there. Oh, and there's another sword there. Now, the King of the Dead, I'm pretty sure, only has one sword, so one of these must be the Sword of the Herald. You can see the kind of different flowing parts of his cloak there as well, which are kind of cool. Really, really lovely stuff. I think this down here, actually, these two cloak bits, now that I'm focusing down here, I think these might actually be a Herald rather than the King, because I think the King is just these parts here, probably. But it's absolutely stunning. Um, the Heralds I'm kind of excited by. I think they're cool models, but I don't particularly think I'll be using them too much, whereas the King of the Dead um, is is just a stunning, stunning model with a great profile. I can't wait to get on the table. Um, around the other side, you can just sort of see how the plastic goes in. Again, you can sort of see how his rib cage is hollow there um, and how these pits, bits will start to join together. Lovely stuff. And then let's have a look at the second sprue, um, which is here. So you can see we've got the two banners on this one, although they don't actually count as banners. Um, lovely, lovely detail. And this is the sort of thing I was talking about earlier that I think I might try and bring a bit of colour to the banners to make them stand out, kind of faded um, colours in the same way of his cape. Uh, the Sword of the Other Herald. The second banner is here. Very, very cool stuff. And then this will be the other herald. That'll be that's obviously his back. And here's his cheeky little face. Hello, I am a herald. Very, very, very cool. And people are waiting a very long time for this. Feels like a really, really good release um to end Gondor of War. I think it was the last release for Gondor of War. And to get a kind of plastic kit of this quality um with such highly anticipated um models. Is that a shield? Yeah I think we've got we've got one shield for a herald here. And another shield for a herald here. Um, so it's nice to see him having kind of custom shields on there as well. Um, they look absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. So I am really excited about these. So we've got these two sprues um, for the kit. Uh, I know this is kind of relatively old news for you guys now because they've been out for a few months. But um, it's nice to be getting stuck in something brand new. So um, there we go. They look amazing. I'm I'm so excited um, to be doing these. All, all the new plastic kits that Gav, Gav's done have been absolutely incredible. Um, I've done the three hunters and they were um, staggering, staggeringly good. So I'm super excited to get into these. And as I said, my only dilemma is um, figuring out quite how much time and effort to put into them um, above and beyond the kind of quick and easy paint scheme I've done the rest of the, my Army of the Dead with. Um, but it's a good problem to have. So there we go, um, that's the sprues. I'm very, very excited. I'm gonna go and get clippy with these and assemble them and then I'll show you the um, assembled models once they're done. Okay, so I'm back and uh, I'm pleased to say the King of the Dead and the Heralds have been cleaned up, um, assembled and um, primed. So let's have a look at them. I'll start with the two Heralds. So Herald the first, there he is. Um, they're absolutely stunning. This is gonna be a kind of I'm sure this is going to be a repeating my teeth throughout this um, throughout this vlog, but they're absolutely gorgeous. Um, I I think a lot of the attention for me went on the King of the Dead when the new kit came out, but the Heralds really, really are stunning. They're beautiful, beautiful kits. You can see they went together really, really well, and you can start to see how you get these kind of gaps in here. So um, you're going to get really interesting depth coming in between there where they're kind of um, semi-hollow. They're really, really super cool. They're clearly a million miles on from the um, metal and plastic Warriors of the Dead, but they still seem to fit in with that aesthetic. And there's the lovely banner. Really, really lovely detail. I think this is my favourite of the two Heralds. Um, he's super, super cool. I um, absolutely love it. Um, as with all these new um, GW plastics, here's the second one, um, there was absolutely minimal cleanup. Really, really little cleanup. Um, very few mould lines. The kits go together beautifully. Look how look how dynamic it is with the amount of kind of pieces pointing out in different directions now. Um, the kits are so well put together, and they just they just slide so smoothly in into place, and leaving like no holes that need filling or anything. I've just um, I've just actually assembled. Depends what order you see this, whether you will have seen it already or not. But I've just assembled Gandalf the White on horse, like the old kit, the um, Firecast one, and. You know the the way that goes together and the amount of filling you have to do is just absolutely incomparable to this. You know there's loads of almost every bit you glue together you need to put um, some element on. That's true of the metal horses and that's true of the fine cast ones. But these plastic kits are just so good. Another cool model. Again, you can see how the kind of um, 
gaps are going to get in there. One thing I am worried about, I did half think about this, that maybe I should have um, should have spent a bit more time on this beforehand, is that actually getting the paint in there is going to be quite tricky. But my hope is that because they're fundamentally kind of white as they're ghosts, if you do end up seeing anything through the middle, it, it won't be too noticeable, I think. But I also have the benefit that I chuck a wash um, over these over these models and I'm just going to apply a really heavy wash inside and what that will hopefully do is just stain the plastic with a kind of green tint even if I can't get the brush directly in but there, uh, there's the other Herald really really super cool and finally the big boy himself the king of the dead and this model is just staggering where is he? there he is it's just stunning I thought it was great when I saw the art but kind of having it together has just given me a whole new appreciation for it it's absolutely gorgeous Gav has done a staggeringly good job on this. This could perhaps win the award, I think, for most improved model. Like all, all the plastics are great, um, but we've had good we've had good Aragorns, Legolas's, Gandalfs in the past. The jump from the Metal King of the Dead to this King of the Dead is just just stunning. Now look at the kind of detail on the hand on the fingers. Like these individually posed fingers is so good. And as I've said before in this vlog, the, the quality of this model makes me kind of want to do a little bit more with the paint job than my normal um, sort of dry brushing uh, way forward. It's just absolutely staggering. Absolutely love this guy. So there we go. That is the um, that is the the guys. The, the three they're assembled and they're ready for the paint um, paintbrush. I will show you one of my. Or is the dead? This kind of guy's picked at random, but this is my existing Army of the Dead guy. So this is the one I, one of the ones that I painted up for the um, what's it called? for the uh, community blog last year. It's um, a base coat of Nihilic oxide. It's a wash of BL10 green, and then it's a dry brush of Ulthuin grey. Um, it works really really well. I'm very happy with it. it works allowed me to paint a whole army up really really super quickly. Um, looks all right, but. I just don't think it's going to cut it for these. So my plan is basically now to do that process for these three models. Um, so I'm going to do exactly that and get these three to this stage. So that's really, really quick. Um, it literally takes sort of five minutes a model. It might take longer on this, I think, to get to get the Nihilic Oxide on these guys because you need to get it running into all those different crevices. But it's um, cover them in that, cover them in Beal Tag Green and then dry brush them from Grey. And then once that's done, they're looking like this. I'm then going to start thinking about how I add a little bit of colour on them to make them pop. So um, yeah, that's what's next for me. And I think what I'll do is I will come back when they are at this state. So once the three of them are done and kind of could be finished, I'll um, I'll, I'll swap it. I'll pop in um, and we can see how that goes. All right, see you then. And I'm back. <laughs> and uh, a funny thing has happened on this little project. Um, last time I saw you, I think I said that I was going to. Um, come back, I think the models were undercoated, and I was going to come back when they had been base coated Nihilic Oxide, washed BR10 Green, and dry brushed Ulta and Grey, so to the point where I got the rest of my army dead, and then I was going to show you them there, and then see where I was going to go from there. And as it turns out, as you can probably see if you look down here, uh, they're based, because they are finished, and guess what? I haven't done anything else on them at all. So... Um, <laughs> I don't know quite um, how to get on with this, if people are going to say this is a terrible, terrible mistake, but these are literally just those three colours. I've just done them exactly the same as the rest of the army of the dead, of my, my army of the dead, sorry. And as it turned out, once I'd done that on them, I was like, do you know what? These look alright. These look kind of cool as it is. So each model has probably taken me under five minutes. Um, but I'm just going to leave them like this. Now, the great thing about this, of course, is it doesn't mean that in the future... I can't come back to them at any point and kind of maybe add some spot colours to them. But I just I don't know, I just they just they just came out really well and I I almost didn't want to risk ruining it, is the King of the Dead. And yeah, so I haven't put any other colours on them and I don't really intend to. I think they're alright. Bear in mind as well, I'm not I'm not particularly painting these guys for a painting competition or anything or as part of an army. It was very much to get them done. So I, I'm not going to agonise over it too much, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think they almost somehow, maybe because of the plastics and the way the plastic picks up the um, paint or something, they almost actually look better than, than the rest of my army dead, despite it's the same um, colour scheme. So 
yeah, this might be an easy way out, and some people will no doubt say, I can't believe you've ruined like those gorgeous new expensive models just with kind of two two coats overall and a dry brush, but I don't know, I, I just think it kind of works. So um, that was a, it wasn't like a choice that I deliberately sort of said, right, I'm not go doing it, I can't be bothered, but it was just the kind of thing where when I found them, I was like, I think they're done. I think they're finished. I don't really need to spend an awful lot of time kind of going back over them and trying to add in colours. I think they look good. And of course the added bonus of this is that they completely and utterly match the rest of my um, Army of the Dead. They all look exactly the same as as, as those. Um, so yeah, so that's a, that's a really nice bonus that they are um, completely finished. Um, really nice and easy um, colour scheme. And... Um, Bob's your aunt's husband, really. But uh, there we go. So, yeah, um, I don't know if that's going to disappoint people or if it's going to um, give you a bit of hope for your own models or something. I don't really know. But they are completely finished. So with that in mind, as ever, the next thing to do in these videos is to pop over to the sofa and have a chat about their profiles. All right, so um, that I've had an unexpectedly early finish, um, which is a rare thing um, for me to happen. Stop it. Um, in kind of hobby terms. Um, so what that means is we can jump straight into the tactics section. Now normally the way these, these vlogs work is that I'll, um, I'll use it, I'll, I'll paint the model up and then take it to an event. Uh, but that's, that's not always possible and the thing about the King of the Dead and the Heralds for me is that that was kind of my last year. Um, you know I took, I took, I painted up most of my Army of the Dead to take it to Throne of Skulls in 2018. Um, yeah, 2018, and then I took the Return of the King Legion to um, the Grand Tournament, I took the Return of the King Legion to Ardicon, and I took um, I took a pure Dead of Dan Harrow Force to a, to a small tournament as well. So I feel like actually I, I've already done that bit, and I don't have any particular plans to take these models to an event soon, so I won't be doing it based on a new event, but I have, as a result of that, kind of ended up with a fair bit of experience, so hopefully I'll have a brief chat about them. So where I want to start, basically, is with this book. Let's start with this, The Army of the Lord of the Rings. Because uh, this is what really kind of put the army of the dead, the dead of Dunharrow Dun on, the, on the table. And it really is the, um, the King of the Dead. So um, this is the old um, book that we would have used. So it's weird how flicking through this now seems like an antique. You know, it's the, the new edition's, what, a year and three months old or something? But it already feels like, God, do you remember, do you remember this? Do you remember these days? And the big change was really to the King of the Dead. So basically the Warriors, the Warriors got the, I think they got the Spectral Walk buff. I, I, I See, this is where I mean I get confused. I thought this was actually in this edition. Maybe it's an FA, in an FAQ, but it's not in here. So the ability to walk over water um, is a new bonus for them. Um, and the uh, Riders of the Dead, their horses became Defence 6 and def instead of Defence 4, which is amazing. So that they were some nice buffs for them, but... What really transformed them, the Dead of Don Harrow, is the King of the Dead, who went from fight four to fight five, one attack to two attacks, and zero might to one might. So that's three buffs, and he, he didn't go up in points. He was 100 points there, and he's 100 points here. But three buffs, an extra point of fight, which is really, really useful throughout most games for kind of winning fights against troops beyond anything else. Um, he got an extra attack to make him, um, again, better at winning fights, and he got a might point. And he has the ability to heroic strike. And all of those things made him far, far more effective to make use of his, um, his drained soul, isn't it? Uh, yeah, drained soul rule, where if he causes a wound, he kills something instantly. Suddenly, the fact that you've got you, um, your slightly higher fight to, to win those fights, you've also got two dice when rolling um, helps. And, of course, he has access to heroic strike, as so having the might point allows him to heroic strike. So what the King of the Dead became was this almost... Almost once a game, if he's your own hero, it's once a game, kind of pick the thing that you want. I, I used to a lot like this, pick the thing that you want to take down, and that's what you use your might point for. I, re I remember playing a pure Dead of Dunharrow Force at 500 points, and so you have one might point on the table back then. Um, this was before Gondor at War came out, it was just for this. And I would I would look around, I'd, I'd never heroic move, there was, just, there was no point in it, but you would pick the one target in your opponent's army. Um, hope that you wanted to take down. It was normally a, normally a kind of mightless monster or a monster that couldn't heroic strike. Um, get in there with the King of the Dead, strike up and then and kill it in one. Um, and he became brilliant at that. And also the, the final kind of huge buff was that if you just took a pure army or a, or a historical alliance, the King of the Dead got a Harbinger of Evil, um, which, was, which was super, super cool. 
Uh, again, just to remember the difference between the um, legions that in the versions that in the old version you could take like a different captain, like a captain Dolan Roth to lead the Warriors of the Dead, but there wasn't a hero. Whereas in the in the uh, Middle Earth SPG, what you could then take was um, warbands without captains, essentially. So it allowed you to not have to take a non-spirit model as well, which was kind of cool. But yeah, the the Harbinger of Evil was amazing because. Um, it, work, it works twice, doesn't it? It works once, you get a minus one for um, models having to charge you um, because all of your models cause terror and once um, because you are wounding against an enemy's courage so suddenly their courage becomes one lower and you can wound them easier. It's absolutely spectacular. And that, that single change really transformed the army. I think even if the Spectral Steeds hadn't changed it still would have had this kind of colossal effect. And I, I kind of stumbled across this... Um, very accidentally, um, for Throne of Skulls. So the new edition launched in September, October. Throne of Skulls uh, 2018 was December, and I painted up this army as part of a hobby challenge for Warhammer community, and then I used it for the first time. As I said, I took this 500-point version of it, uh, just with the King of the Dead, and found that you really, really needed might. So then um, for the 1,000-point Throne of Skulls, I painted up Aragorn, and it was just I just used Aragorn, the King of the Dead, and then loads of guys. I can't remember how many I got in the end, but about five riders and a bunch of, a bunch of warriors. And I, that then, it seems obvious now, because everyone knows now the armies that are quite powerful, but at the time, they hadn't really been tested or anything. They, you know, they hadn't seen a lot of use in the new edition. And I kind of just accidentally won a bunch of games with them. And it was just, it's the combination of those things. So I played a, um, an Iron Hills Dwarf army, and suddenly what that meant was the Iron Hills Dwarf, because of Harbinger of Evil, the Iron Hills Dwarfs were needing... Um, needing sixes to kill me with my defence eight, and their courage dropped to threes, and my warriors are dead when needing fours to kill them. And suddenly, like the whole combat advantage completely swings in your favour because of Harbinger of Evil. And there's, it, you just can't underestimate how powerful that rule is. One of the games I played was against a Goblin Town army, and you 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 start to learn with the King of the Dead not to necessarily. He, his position is more important than him fighting. In, in you know, in many ways, whilst you want to try and get him to kill stuff, you need him in your army to make everything else kill stuff. He he becomes almost like a banner or a shaman. I I found in a lot of games where, you know, you need to make absolutely sure he's protected, um, because if he goes down, your whole, your army will crumble like like nobody's business. And there was a game of whole ground I played against something like a hundred and fifty goblins, and um, I managed to get to the middle first because I had Aragorn, so I right marched. But I just made a circle about six inches around the objective, and the king stood in the middle. And so if you imagine the king's here, six inches away are my models, and then five inches away are the goblins who want to come in, so that basically every model in my opponent's army was within 12 inches of the king of the dead. And that then makes your goblins courage one, so they need nines to charge. Um, and, and so hardly any of them could charge. And then when they did get into fight, because they courage one, my strength three warriors need threes to kill them. So in that game, my, my King of the Dead, I don't think he fought a single combat. He just stood on the objective to make sure that his this devastating effect um, kind of won me the game, essentially. So that, that's that been quite a fun thing to kind of figure out the usage of, that a lot of, the, a lot of what you do about the King of the Dead, it's like, oh yeah, let's go and kill a mum like in one. And that, that's great, and it's incredibly useful. But Harbinger of Evil is hands down his best rule, um, I think, for, for the army. And kind of the effect it will have on you. So, so when when you're using this this gorgeous new model, that is really, really, really stunning, and I absolutely adore it. Um, you, you need to think about his positioning, and and that that's the most important thing. Um, he only has one might point, certainly certainly in here. And as I said, I nine times out of ten um, save that for a heroic strike. Particularly when you then put Aragorn in the list, as you could through the Rangers um, faction, and you still can through the Rangers faction. Um, Suddenly, you then you can use Aragorn to call the heroic moves and have a bit more board control, which is obviously what I was doing at Throne of Skulls, and still keeping that King of the Dead's uh, might for one crucial heroic strike um, to go in. He, he's deadly. He, he's a he's a terrifying model to to face on the on the on the battlefield, and um, and he's really he, he's really kind of cool and he's a good iconic leader. And he, it's a it's a fairly simple small set of rules that really transform the Dead of Dunharrow from a kind of fairly laughable thematic faction with you know a one-off chance i think it's seven stones one year so um kieran street killed the balrog with the king of the dead you know like a single dice attack somehow he won the fight probably with another hero single dice attack needing whatever he would have needed a six by six and he, he kills him in one so he always could do it but now now he feels like he should 
You know, if he if he gets in there with his two dice, wounding against your courage, he's probably going to do that wound. And uh, there's an awful lot of things out there with like a single fate point, and he's got a good opportunity to do two wounds, in which case you ain't going to stop it, and you're and you're going to die. Um, so he's really cool. Um, so that that was that was kind of cool. And you know, for the last whatever three months of 2018, the Dead of Dunharrow became quite you know very very popular. You know, everyone got him in the Palina set. They're easy to paint, so you're seeing lots and lots of forces um, coming up. They they hit incredibly hard because they're wounding against your courage, and they um, and they take an awful lot of damage. Um, they can take an awful lot of beating because they're defense eight, and they've got very good courage as well. They're you know they're a really dependable army, but where where they do fall down is um, is is numbers. Uh, you know they, they I played this 500 point game again, one might point, and every model in your army costs at least 15 points, and you do struggle at objective games. Um, you really do, and once people start kind of getting around you, which they often could when you didn't have the other heroes in the list and the, the might available, um, it was tough. As soon as you got to, I don't know what the point Aragorn would have gone in in Armies of the Lord of Rings, it's probably around, it's probably around 600, probably not 500, but about the 600 point. I remember I was debating at that 500 point taking Aragorn, and I just thought it was too much of a point sink with the King of the Dead as well, because you have to take both, um, and then suddenly that's the best part of 300 points. Um, of your 500, but maybe, maybe, maybe um, at 600 you'd get Aragorn, the King of the Dead, and about 20 guys, and that that's about right. But as the army w went up, it became more viable to the point where a thousand points at Throne of Skulls, I had Aragorn and the King of the Dead, and then that that won all five games. So you know, there's there's some line in there. That was good. So he he was really good. There's lot, lots of fun you can have with him, and now we have this gorgeous, gorgeous new model. Um, available uh, to you, so we've seen a lot of him on the table, and I think I think we'll see a lot more of him. Um, but the limitation was well, there's a couple of limitations. One, he only had one might, so his heroic strike was very much a one-off. And if he goes into that monster and he loses the heroic strike, he gets rendered to death, and it's fairly dreadful. So three fate and two wounds, it's a bit survival. Um, but we also didn't have any other heroes. I think a lot of people maybe were expecting in the new edition to get the, the Captain of the Dead or something. And so maybe we're a bit surprised they didn't. And um, of course that was finally fixed when Gondor War came out and we got to the um, Herald of the Dead. Um, which if Damien has rewatched this when he's editing it, should hopefully be appearing beside my face now. Maybe on that side? Maybe be on that side. He's over there somewhere, hopefully. Um, so we got the Herald of the Dead, and it was a new profile. And it wasn't quite the profile that we were necessarily expecting. So let's, let's have a look. There are 70 points, uh, fight four, so a buff to the Warrior of the Dead, strength four, that's another buff, defense seven with the option for a shield, so that's the same. Two attacks, two wounds, and courage six, with three will and two fate. Um, so that's cool as a profile, it's quite a decent, you know, that's that's a solid captain, the, the two wounds and two attacks and two fate, that's a, that's a decent captain profile. Um, but what is also interesting is they come with the rule, they, they basically get two bonus special rules. One, that um, friendly spirit models within three inches of a um, Herald of the Dead get the resistance to magic special rule. And two, um, if the King of the Dead is within three or three inches or more of, of one or more heralds, the King of the Dead can use their will points to declare a heroic action instead of spending one of his own might points. So as soon as you have a herald, that is three potential might points to um, to the uh, to the King of the Dead. Now it's one of those classic kind of trade-offs, isn't it? Because it's not it's not three might. They don't have might themselves. You're still going into it with one might. Um, but if you just take the king and the herald, but you have the option suddenly. The way the way the tempting bit about it is that it sounds like four heroic strikes to me, you know, because it's heroic action. It's not like uh, Gothmog's enforcer. I'm pretty sure is just um, uh, just what I'm trying to say. Use your words. Just heroic moves, isn't he? I think for Gothmog because he does a very similar role. Uh, Gothmog's enforcer. Yeah, heroic moves. So. We, we see a lot of this kind of thing, a support hero who can spend will points to, to allow a, a bigger hero to do something. And um, with Gothmog, you, you know, it's only moved, so you can't kind of burn for it for strikes in combat. Whereas with the Heralds, the King of the Dead can use it for anything. So A, yeah, he has the potential for four heroic strikes, but also, and I think more importantly, he has the potential to heroic move and still have the ability to heroic strike later in the game. And potentially, you know, two of them. It's still not a lot of might. Let's, let's be honest, it's not. 
but it's significantly um, it's significantly better, and it gets you another leader. It also gets you the potential for stand fast um, on a model with um, with courage six um, and three will. Um, you obviously won't be well, using his will to pass courage test, but you can do. And then you also get this other rule: um, three inch ma um, resistance to magic, which is cool. It's a nice it's a nice buff. Um, it only affects spirit models, so we'll talk about the legendary legion in a minute. So it doesn't kind of protect Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli. Um, from that sort of stuff. The King of the Dead himself has six will, so he doesn't necessarily need it. So what it's really doing is protecting your warriors. Now, obviously, it's not too often, I suppose, that your warriors are the targets of magical powers rather than um, rather than heroes. You know, sometimes they 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 want people want to kind of command them out to charge and heroic combat. We know this, and Sorceress Blast a model who can't resist into a model who can resist to kind of do a bit of damage. You know, we, we know we know the tricks, but. Um, what it does also do is give you protection against things like nature's wrath, um, where you can, you know every model in your army has the potential to kind of resist um, area of effect spells, which is cool. Um, so it's a, not, it's a nice little buff, and that, those are the two rules basically. And it's whether or not those two rules are worth it. I, and the way I always look at it is, he costs seventy five points because you've got to give him a shield, right? Um, and two warriors of the dead with shield are thirty two points. Um, and that's what you're kind of getting because you get two attacks, two wounds, and two fates. So a bit more, but you get you get kind of kind of the damage output of two warriors of the dead. Um, so that's your that's your 32 point, points off 75. So it's about 43 points. You're paying about 40 points for those two buffs. So are those two buffs worth 40 points? Is the way that I would I would tend to look at it. And um, I think it depends on your force. If you were taking, if I was now taking a pure Dead of Dunharrow force. It gives you a really nice option. It makes the force viable. When I played at five hundred points with just the King of the Dead, I think I lost two out of three games, and it wasn't it wasn't a viable force. And having the Herald in there to give you a few more might points would make it viable. But there there is an issue with the points where if you're gonna spend seventy five points on on the Herald, I, I don't know what the sweet spot is where you wouldn't spend one hundred and sixty points and get Aragorn in there. And, and this is pre legendary legion. I'm just I'm just looking at the pure Dunharrow list. So there's definitely there's a thematic thing. I think if you wanted to take a kind of dead Dunharrow list, almost as if it was like, I think there's I think there's stuff in Return of the King about the 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 local area being terrified of the king and dead, almost like they raid. And if you're doing a kind of pre, um, almost like an evil army of the dead, and you don't want Aragorn in it, then the Herald of the Dead's amazing. You've you've got to add you've got to add him in. But then, I kind of think as soon as you can get Aragorn in, Aragorn's the Obviously, the better choice than the Herald of the Dead. So, the Herald of the Dead then, in a in a normal Dead of Dunharrow army, probably becomes your third choice hero after after Aragorn, and, it, and he goes in there. But of course, most people um, don't take Dead of Dunharrow army, armies with uh, Strider Aragorn allied in from the Rangers, do they? Most people now take the Return of the King. Is the Return of the King the most popular legendary legion to see play yet? Uh, it wouldn't surprise me. Um, Jay won the Grand Tournament with it, um, beyond beyond other things. Uh, we've seen loads of people do it. It's, again, why would you take this Legendary Legion? Because A, you've got all the models from the start of set, and B, you just bung in the Three Hunters, um, the, the gorgeous plastic Three Hunters. You've got this beautiful, beautiful plastic Legendary Legion now, um, particularly when added to by the, um, King, the new King of the Dead and the Herald. Um, so this is how a lot of people are playing this army now. And let's see where the Herald fits in there. You have to include Aragorn and you have to include the King of the Dead. Um, no problem there. So that's your first basically 260 points. You're then going to take a bunch of guys with it, aren't you? Um, Aragorn gets Andrew all free. Amazing. Um, there, is an, there is a kind of slight argument that... I've had it before that I, I don't think it is better, but um, there's an argument that the old version, where you, you could put him on a horse and give him armour... And potentially a bow, so more killing power, and the bow, is that better than a free Andrew? And it, you know, the free Andrew is probably better, but I don't, I don't think it's entirely cut and dry. Like a army of the dead with strike ranger Aragorn on horse and with armor would, would be pretty good as well. It's, it's worth exploring, but yeah, you'd, you'd have to pay for Andrew. Um, although maybe the knockdown from the horse means you don't have to pay for Andrew. Who knows? But he gets Andrew free, um, and then we also get a banner. Um, a spirit banner for Aragorn. So Aragorn counts as a six inch banner. So that saves you. The Legendary Legion also saves you excuse me, 25 points on your banner that you would have previously taken as well. So there's a kind of 65 point saving in this Legion from the banner of Mandrill, which is really good. Um, so that's the Legion now. Now what do you take? 
have to take the King and Dead, have to take Aragorn, and then that there's there's divided opinion. I've seen then a lot of people take the Herald after that and put the Herald in. Some people do, but for me, if you're you know, if you're playing competitively, which I think is what these little bits are meant to be about necessarily, it's not, you know, if you're going thematically, you put the Herald of the Dead in, obviously. It's got to be Legolas and Gimli, I think, thematically, or neither of them. Uh, so you put the Herald of the Dead in. But if you're going competitively, it's Legolas next. You've got no shooting in your army, and Legolas gives you that that terrifying ability to snipe banners, put wounds on leaders, um, and so on and so forth. Me and Tom took, we took the Legendary Legion, like a thematic version of it, to Ardacon Doubles. Um, so we had we had all three hunt. It was I can't remember how many points it was, seven hundred something like that. But we took all three hunters, um, the King of the Dead and some Warriors of the Dead. So not it wasn't optimized by any point. But Legolas in that was deadly, and he he killed um, he killed a wraith. I can't remember who it was. Maybe the Witch King. But it was a it was a two wraith, a two fate wraith on a fell beast, and he he one shotted him. I think he might have had to hit him twice. But he, he, you know he took him out, and that's 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 a game winner. Um, so Legolas suddenly gives you that ability. He, he has to be that hero. And then, that's when your choice comes in. Is it Gimli or is it the Herald of the Dead? And I think, again, thematically, you have to go for Gimli. And he's cool, and it looks great, and you want to use your lovely new model. But look, ah, oh, ah, oh, wherever he is, we've now got a lovely new model for the Herald of the Dead as well. And um, I don't think, I, I've used Gimli um, at the same at the same GT, actually, where, where Jay won it. We'd, we'd had a chat beforehand where I, I deliberately, you know, he took, he took the King of the Dead, Aragorn, and Legolas. And I, I took Gimli, and it wasn't it wasn't a kind of you know uh, decision that oh one's better, one's the other. I just I I was going for, I, I didn't care about winning. I was like your version's better. The version without Gimli at seven hundred points is better. Like I don't think Gimli brings a lot to that army at all beyond a kind of thematic um, pace. And what what Gimli does is he he chops things up well and he can take a lot of beating. And what does the army of the dead do? They chop things up well and they can take a lot of beating. So Gimli. Everyone wants to take him because everyone loves Gimli and they love the Three Hunters, but he doesn't add a lot to the army that you need. He really doesn't give you a lot of functionality in any way, whereas the, the Herald of the Dead does. Um, I still think I'd go for Gimli, but if I was going purely competitively, I don't know when I'd put him in. 800 points, 900 points maybe. Um, as I said, I won Throne of Skulls, um, which is 1,000, with Aragorn and the King of the Dead. I would easily put Legolas into that list to make it better at a thousand points, but I don't think I'd put Gimli in. Like to put Gimli in, your your sacrifice maybe is it six warriors, seven warriors, is it seven warriors or Gimli? And for me, that's seven warriors all day. And so that that's where the the debate comes. But would I put a herald in at a thousand points now? Maybe. And so that that's the that's the interesting dilemma I think you you have. That if you if you want to play it competitively for me, and you're playing it as the Legion as you probably are. The Herald is your your joint fourth pick of hero, I think, depending on depending on if you want him. I think you go King of the Dead and Aragorn because you have to. You then put Legolas in, and then um, you might put the King of the Dead in, or you might um, you might put Gimli in. Sorry, not the King of the Dead, the Herald of the Dead, or you might put Gimli in. That for me is where where he slots in. Um, so what what I love about that is it's not an auto choice. You know, it's this. A lot of people moan on the internet about power creep and stuff, and it's not the Herald does isn't this kind of mini King of the Dead who you have to have in your army at the expense of everything else. He's a really really cool thematic addition to the Legendary Legion that that makes you think about it. And as I said, I've seen some people putting him in as the first hero before Legolas. Maybe people don't like splitting Legolas and Gimli up. I've seen people put him in as the hero after Legolas, and I've seen people not include him at all. So that I, I think that's good game balance and game design really because it means that. You know, different people think that he's got more or less of a use than than other people, which is which is super super cool. So there we go. That that's kind of how I think the Herald Dead fits into the game as as it is now. Um, quite when you use two of them, I've got no idea. <laughs> You're probably talking like uh, mega points, but it's nice to have a kind of choice of the of the models. And as well, um, you might well find that. Um, they're not actually banners. They don't count as banners, so they might make nice banner proxies if your um, if your opponent agrees with that, um, which most people would in casual games. They're um, they're, they're lovely kind of um, models with the with the flags as well. So there we go. Um, that's that. I think that's hopefully giving you a chat about it. Um, am I all right? I feel fairly up to speed with this. I'm not I'm not kind of in touch with the competitive scene nearly as much as I used to be, but I've played a lot with the King of the Dead and, and the Return of King Legion, uh, so I still feel fairly confident in what I'm saying about this. Uh, but as always, these are only my own views and opinions and do not represent the views of um, better players uh, than me. 
But um, let me know in the comments below what you what you think about the King of the Dead and the Herald of the Dead these days. As you know, the meta of the new edition is starting to settle, is it? Um, so you know, how are they fitting in? Is there a role for the Herald of the Dead there? Um, and have people found enough ways to deal with the King of the Dead? I'd, you know, I'd love to hear from you um, on that and see what you think. Um, that's the end of this vlog. Um, it's probably about an hour, is it? These things normally end up at about an hour by the time they, we've unboxed everything and painted it and all that. So hopefully this has been a good um, little chunky bonus video. This has probably been the quickest one I've ever done in a way. I think the, the whole thing's been done in about two weeks from unboxing to uh, the Taxis Fox. That's good to get it done and get it sorted. Um, I think you will have already seen the catapult one. I've got one, well, I think the Mordor catapult one's coming out before this one is, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Um, and I, so I've done two of these in fairly quick succession, or got two of them finished in quick succession. I don't know what the next one is um, at the moment. I haven't, I haven't started one. I want waiting very much to clear the decks on these two. Um, but um, I'll, I'll have a dig around the models I'm planning on kind of painting up from scratch. I've got a couple of ideas about what I might do for the next one but we'll, we'll have to wait and see um but yeah they're they're fun to do and i like them and i like building up this little series of kind of fairly arbitrarily picked sets but i um i hope i hope you're agreeing and you you're enjoying them as well and uh happy to see more content on the channel so there we go hope you enjoyed it until next time don't forget to comment like share and subscribe support your hobbit host by clicking the links below like us on facebook support your hobbit hobby and happy strategy battle gamer